already checked this co this computer's memory and it had four gigabytes installed. And it may be possible that this motherboard only accepts 32-bit processors. And with Windows, the limitation for memory on a 32-bit operating system is four gigs, and the and yet Windows can only use three of it. So I know I can't upgrade the memory, but since it is at four gigs and it's the, ma the maximum memory for this board according to the spec on the Lenovo website, I probably already upgraded it. So on IBM laptops, you want to look for the holes with the little icons. You always start with the memory icon and remove those screws first and then investigate how the memory is upgraded and then you do the keyboard icons and see if you can get the keyboard out and then lastly you do these other ones I don't know I don't know what this symbol's for but then not lastly those are third and then fourth if you have to do a complete teardown you do all the other screws after that but the user serviceable ones are labeled with icons so I'm going to start with the memory ones and see which part of this laptop wants to come out. If the screw hole has more than one icon, you still do it. Also, if the screw hole has more than one icon, it's a clue to the puzzle of how the laptop goes back together. Because the screw could be holding down more than one thing. I know on the T42 that I had long before this T60, the palm rest held down the front lip of the keyboard. Those are all of those. And then there's one more for the keyboard, and we're going to do that after we're going to see what the, the memory one does. Oh, I can already tell palm rest is loose. You see here? You can see the memory was already upgraded apparently. Must have, I must have done that way back when I got this laptop. A friend gave this to me. He was getting rid of old stuff. They upgraded it. I never used it. He gave me two T60s. One with the with the widescreen and one with the old 4x3 ratio. And apparently I upgraded this because there's two sticks of memory in there already. Now we can take the keyboard out. There's only one screw left for that. The reason why I used the widescreen one was because it had higher definition screen and it had a 64-bit processor, which I have since upgraded. This is probably going to be a similar ribbon cable. Yep, let's see if you can see that. And so, it's got a rubber pad on the top, and sometimes I just pull on that rubber pad, but it's not really a good thing. You want to get a flathead on your I fix it or another system, another screwdriver, get under the edge and pop it. You do it super careful so your screwdriver doesn't mash against those contacts. There you go, that's the keyboard. Now what do we got here? There we go, that's a good focus. Now this is going to be a Wi-Fi card and this is probably a modem of some kind. Maybe it was used for 3G or something. It is an Antel MC-102. So I'll do a quick Google search. Something on eBay, another thing on eBay. It says internal modem card. It just says part number 39T0495. But that's more information than I had before.
Oh, it does say that. Right here. I wish I was filming with the Moza Genie app. It focuses faster. There we go. There's a there's focus. There's a part number right there. Three nine T zero four nine five. If I Google that. Timelek, Amazon, eBay, Walmart. Really? Walmart's selling it? That is weird. What kind of market are we in? It just... The 56K dial-up modem. Okay, so finally someone tells me what it is. Dial-up. That is funny. Then... That explains why there's a RJ11 next to an RJ45 on this laptop. It actually had dial-up. And I just did RIP headphones to all the people watching. Now the other one is... And I already showed that to you earlier. I'll show it again on the screen. WM3945ABG. Throw that into Google. ABG will not do. I'm Googling the specs. What I need here is the dimensions. And also a mention of someone else on the internet upgrading it. Someone is talking about upgrading it to a 4965 AGM. Nah, it's just a whole bunch of reading that goes on and on and on. If I throw the 4965 AGM into eBay, see what they got. 300 megabytes a second. That's cool. I could use that much. 50 by 30 millimeters. This is 50 by 30 millimeters. It's probably the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and buy it. Alright, I bought that. Now, CPU. Is under here and the GPU is under here it all carries the same heat sink and I won't be able to change the CPU without taking the whole machine apart so let's see if it get this thing to take an SSD so there's a, a flap get a hold of it I'll let you pull it out what you want to do is set it down like so you can't see this. Sit down like right there. Move the I fix it over a little bit. Your SATA ports are pointing the same direction. So you're just transferring parts over to the other one. Something like that. And this comes in a cage with two screws on either side. out first before I hear anybody complain about me working on the carpet I've done this for years and the only time I've ever fried a motherboard because of the carpet was because it was winter one I was walking with in my socks and I touched touched a motherboard directly that was not grounded. It was a mining computer. I was ex experimenting with uh learning to mining in 2017 when Bitcoin was real popular and stuff. 
So you just put this back in in the same orientation as the other one. That's important because some laptops are really picky about the way that the cage goes back in. And you might as well just do it the exact same way so you don't have any problems. Especially with the, 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 the power and the data ports. Or it's the other way around, I don't remember, but whatever. I digress. They're shaped a certain way and they only go in one direction. What was I saying about that, that mining computer? Uh, yeah, I fried the motherboard, so after that I went on Amazon and bought a mining case. That's the only time I've ever fried a motherboard by shocking it with static electricity. And that's because the motherboard wasn't grounded. Now right now this one isn't grounded, but that's why I removed the the power and the battery before touching it. So there's no power in it. Why am I so clumsy? Bumble. Let's try a bigger tip. Definitely a job that takes dexterity and patience. There we go. Bigger tip puts it in better. Oh, Alright, so back in the same direction. We put these rubber pads on the exact same way. These are anti vibrational pads that reduce the disk read errors and writes of hard drives. Don't actually need these for a solid state drive, but. The case is designed to accept it. Now I'm going to look inside. I probably won't be able to shine a light down here. But you just have to believe me that I'm looking in there to see which hole's bigger and which hole's smaller for this connectors to make sure I put it in the right way. And this pull flap has to be pushed that way down in there. Put this cover back on. Now I want to plug this keyboard back in. If you want to see the connector, that needs to be, go back into the slot, which is right here and you just have to pop it on and you have to get an angle where you can see it and so I'm propping it up you won't be able to see it but I'm propping it up in a way so I can get my hand between the keyboard and the motherboard while I can see what I'm doing and pop it in and it made a click I'll slide in the back first set it down now let's I bet you so there was, this only had one screw, so I bet you it's easier if I put this one screw in first, like that puzzle I was talking about earlier, to make it easier on yourself. I took all the memory and all the memory ones out first, and this one doesn't, it doesn't have a memory picture on it. So that should hold that. It is. It's holding it in there. That's good. And this has the same type of connector, the screen cap of it. I'm going to do the same thing. I need to be able to see what I'm doing and have my hand in between. It's being plugged into that. Actually going to hold this because it feels pretty loose. Get these ones on the ends. 
because this is a lot like my T42 that I used to have where, so you see it, the palm rest holds down the front lip of the keyboard. So I'm going to use my previous experience with repairing laptops and do those first. That way I don't have to hold down the palm rest as much to do the other ones. There's these two holes in here. I didn't know what they were for years and years ago. And by years and years ago, literally a decade. It was 2009 when I worked at a place that had T42s. That's why I bought one because I liked them so much. But these holes here have two icons. They have a little keyboard icon. They have a little keyboard icon and they have a little water icon. Don't put screws in here. What this is, is when you spill liquid on your keyboard, you hold it up, the laptop in, like this, and you shake it, and the liquid comes out of those holes. So I can confirm, with seeing this, I pulled this out of there. I mean, if I can get a focus where you can see that I wrote pink on it. I know I upgraded this laptop because pink, whenever I pull a hard drive out of a computer that came with it, I write the name of the computer on there and it was a pink Sony Bio that I bought my, my ex a long time ago. And then when I upgraded her laptop with a more RAM and with an SSD, I kept that hard drive. What's the capacity on there? Do, 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 500 gigs. So now I'm gonna install Windows to 10 on it, 32 bit. This video isn't about installing Windows 10, so I'm not gonna show you that. And when the parts come in the mail, I'm gonna record that. Video. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. If you'd like to see when I put the CPU and the Wi Fi card in, Go ahead and get subscribed so you don't miss that. If there's anything in the video you want to comment on, go ahead and tell me in the comments below if you get any ideas or any tips or suggestions for other viewers. Please do that. And if you like what you saw or you learned something today, go ahead and hit like for me. It helps out a lot. Thanks. See you next time.